Okay, we move on to our next um, uh, talk of the day, which would be Fitness for Medical Professionals by Dr. K. A. Tyagarajan. Dr. Tyagarajan uh, is a professor of Department of Arthroscopy and Sports Medicine, Center for Sports Medicine at Sri Ramachandra Medical College and Research Institute. Um, Dr. Tyagarajan is the first sports medicine doctor in India to have qualified with the Medical Council of India. Um, uh, he additionally has specialized in physical medicine and rehabilitation. Dr. Tyagarajan is a senior faculty at the Center for Sports Medicine at Sri Ramchandra Medical College and Research Institute. He has various interests, uh, which includes sports biomechanics, sports nutrition, and injury prevention. Uh, one small another uh, additional interest is his uh, singing. He is also part of uh, a, a band, uh, Melodicos. So he is also a singer and a guitarist in the band. Welcome, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Priya. That was unexpected. So sweet of you for the liberal introduction. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are, sir. Okay. Let me go on to the presentation. Are we able to see the presentation? Yes, sir. Okay. So thanks again for the lovely introduction and uh, thanks to Dr. Sai for bringing me here today for the interaction with uh, our fellow doctors. It's a proud privilege for us and wonderful uh, prelude set by Professor uh, Sivakadakshan sir and other speakers uh, for the doctor's health. So when coming to fitness, probably in the decade of COVID is much more relevant to us. And uh, fitness is a buzzword now. And a lot of people say a lot of things. And uh, even we doctors have a lot of doubts because there are so many myths and so many controversies, so many gray areas. And uh, let us try to uh, decode a few within the given strict time of 20 minutes or so. <laughs> Okay, uh, here we go. So before going on to the session, uh, it's always uh, better to do a cerebral exercise. I will just hit a sixer to you, six questions. Please note the answers because this is going to stimulate our brain. Uh, the question number one is, uh, we have heard about the non-weight bearing exercise and uh, we have to name one, whether it's running, B, gymnastics, C, swimming, D, stair climbing. So which one of this is non-weight bearing exercise? Question number two is, uh, how do we regulate and monitor the exercise intensity, the training or exercise intensity through oxygen consumption, B, heart rate, C, rate of perceived exertion, D, raised pace. So these are all technical terms and some of them are very basic terms. So what do we mostly use? We use everything, of course. So mostly used one. Third one is the exercise high. It's a weekend, so some of us may be slightly wanting to feel high. So how does the exercise uh, give us the high? Through insulin, growth hormone, adrenaline, or through some peptides. And uh, number four is uh, which one causes irritability? Which of these supplements? Supplements is a fancy word now nervousness and gastrointestinal distress. Caffeine, energy gels, beetroot juice, famous now, ginseng. And as uh, Dr. Shivakadakshan mentioned about the risk factors, which one is considered as a cardiovascular risk factor if uh, we are physically more active for more than 30 minutes, at least three days a week, active for less than 30 minutes in two days per week, active for more than 30 minutes, four days, more than 45 minutes, three days, so obvious, answer is obvious. And the sixer is the energy systems during a marathon, long duration, endurance running. So which of the energy system comes into the flow? Phosphocreatinine, anaerobic glycolysis, anaerobic, aerobic system or intermediate system, immediate system. So We'll uh, look at the answers uh, at the end of the session just to stimulate our brains a bit. Coming to exercise, fitness, physical activity, there are various terms. 
So how do we define the scientific community, uh, sports science and exercise science? Physical activity is any bodily movement which is produced by skeletal muscle contraction, which substantially increases the energy expenditure. Whereas exercise is defined as a planned, structured, repetitive body movement done to improve fitness, various uh, aspects of fitness. And what is physical fitness per se is the ability to perform regular, moderate to vigorous level of physical activity without excessive fatigue. So these are all interrelated terms, but each one has its uh, specific meaning. So before prescribing uh, exercise or fitness or physical activity to the patients, if it's better that uh, if we understand these terms and uh, prescribe accordingly. So parts of the physical fitness, uh, mainly we are going to talk about health related physical fitness that uh, helps us to stay healthy. And for sports people, it may be additionally, they may treat skill related physical fitness to perform well in the sports and certain activities. So lifetime physical activity, we do it for two purposes. One is for health promotion, around 150 calories you need to burn, which as again, as beautifully told by Professor Sivagadakshim, it's about 30 minutes of brisk walking on most of the days. And let us not have snacks at the end of every five minutes as <laughs> some of the swimmers were doing. So the second aspect of uh, lifestyle physical activity is health promotion plus weight management. Probably this is more famous and more wanted. Here we have to do uh, 60 minutes or more of daily minutes of activity to prevent weight gain and engage 60 to 90 daily minutes of activity, just activity to sustain the weight loss. So here you need to be a bit more active for additional weight management. How much is enough? Generally, uh, we tend to do either too much or uh, too less. So moderate intensity versus high intensity is another question, whether we have to do the high intensity exercise, which is gaining popularity now. We have to do it continuously or intermittently, low intensity. So there's a lot of debate on this. I, I think better we do a exercise fitness testing first and then uh, depending on our age and uh, level of uh, our initial fitness, we have to decide upon all these things. So you may either uh, uh, check with uh, people like us or uh, some uh, good trainers or they, they can be also uh, consulted. Components of physical fitness is apart from muscular strength and endurance, we need flexibility and uh, we need cardio respiratory endurance much, much important now in the days of COVID. And of course, we have to have an ideal body composition. Whereas athletes need a bit of uh, more in everything. They need additionally speed, power, agility, balance, coordination, reaction time. And this also differs from sports to sports. So let's not go into it because it's fitness for us that we are bothered. So generally the exercise is based on a principle called progressive overload. So that adapts to training. We call it as a fit principle, F-I-T-T. -T. So we need to define the frequency, how often we have to do the exercises, the intensity, how hard we have to do it, and the time, how long, and the type of activity. So physical activity or exercise prescription is exactly like our medical prescription. It has to be precise. Dosage has to be mentioned. Timing has to be mentioned. And that's why, uh, because wrong prescription can harm. So for example, the fit principle, you can see the cardio respiratory exercises on the top left. Three to five days a week is enough, whereas strength and conditioning is required only to uh, two to three days of non-consecutive days. You should not do strengthening exercise daily. So just to give muscles time to recover, whereas uh, flexibility exercises can be done two to three days a week. Similarly, intensity, time, type have all been defined and uh, this is a uh, very generous uh, general slide, but uh, we have to take into account based on the fit principle. So we can design our own exercise program. It's better to have, because we are, most of us at least are older adults now. So we have to have a medical basic clearance uh, doing the treadmill test under the blood check as uh, mentioned by our previous speakers. And then 
a fitness assessment, either by a sports medicine doctor or a trainer or a physio. We have to do it and then uh, we have to set the goals. Setting the goals is the most important thing because we have to be really smart in this. Smart in this, uh, we have to be specific. The goals have to be measurable, like half a kg in a week, things like that. And they have to be attainable. We should not aim for uh, too much. And they have to be realistic and time frame specific. So the consultant might be able to help you in these things. That is why personal trainers are very famous, popular. So we have to design our own exercise program. We can choose activities to balance the program or we can include activities to develop health related components. So some of the guidelines basically are given or uh, we want to train the way how you want to change the body to change and train regularly, not start on the new year and then finish it on the 7th of January. You have to start slowly, get in shape gradually and let's not over train because injuries are common. Warm up is neglected most of the time, warm up before the exercise and cool down after exercise is needed and exercise has to be done safely, especially during the COVID uh, because we have to prevent all this uh, uh, airborne transmission. So masks, uh, wherever relevant, you have to be worn and uh, you have to maintain the social distance and cleaning of the surfaces of the gym or uh, equipment that are interchangeably used. So we need to listen to our body and get adequate rest and the intensity of our workouts have to be varied. It has to be cycled actually. And the training with a partner always helps, especially if it's a beautiful female partner for male doctors. And uh, it must be your wife most often. And that will be very ideal. And we have to vary our activities. And uh, training your mind is very important as Dr. Shwagat Aksham said. Mental fitness is also very important. We have to fuel our activity with correct amount of carbohydrates before the exercise and some protein after the exercise. And it should be fun. So it should not be very serious and monotonous and boring, then uh, we'll leave it. And we need to track our progress. There are various fitness apps now, and we can uh, use our mobiles or the uh, watches for our tracking our fitness progress. And uh, we have to keep the program in perspective. So the benefits, we can go on, including cardiorespiratory to cancer, to immunity, which is important for COVID improved mental health and longer lifespan has been already spoken. The list is endless, so let's not go into it. We know the benefits of the exercise and physical activity and cardiorespiratory fitness is designed as an aerobic exercise, uh, which increases the heart rate, very important. And VO2 max is a uh, criteria which we use to measure. It is generally done in a lab, but nowadays some smart watches also can give you the VO2 max. Arabic fitness program. Again, you have to use the principle, including the frequency. Use the heart rate calculations. Calculate your maximum heart rate and use 50% heart rate, 50% of your maximum heart rate as a lower limit and upper limit around the 70% of your expected maximal heart rate. That's a little vigorous intensity exercises. So we have to measure the uh, maximum heart rate, 220 minus our age, and half of that, at least we should achieve to call it as an aerobic exercise. And if it's around uh, 70, 65%, it's a good intensity. And anything exceeds 70 to 85% is a vigorous intensity exercises. You need to be a little careful about that. Muscular strength and endurance, uh, how do we calculate? Muscular strength is calculated by one RM. It's the maximum amount of weight that we can move at one time. So based on that 60% or 70% is what trainers uh, guide you to do the muscular strengthening exercises. And the endurance is the ability of the muscle to contract repeatedly without fatiguing. So both parameters are important. So there are various ways, uh, ways of doing strengthening and uh, uh, conditioning exercises, uh, which includes uh, the dumbbells, body weight resistance, and uh, gym exercise equipment core strengthening, so we have to choose anything. So this is a stability ball or Swiss ball as we call it, a very good uh, uh, thing. Stretching is important because flexibility is a, 
a very, very important thing. There are different types of stretching. Generally, we do a bit of static stretching, but athletes sometimes they do dynamic as well as ballistic stretching also. So it's a higher level, but static stretching is enough. So yoga is a very good in this thing and uh, it gives good stretches. And uh, along with Tai Chi and Pilates, it's a different forms of uh, traditional exercises. Uh, which blend the mental and physical aspects and Tai Chi sometimes is called meditation and movement and Pilates is also very popular. So we can choose anyone. So not that uh, one is superior over other. So, but beware of a lot of uh, gurus, so-called gurus, yoga gurus, they might mislead the public or mislead the entire nation. The like entire country is burning because of some of the so-called gurus now. So we can learn ourselves or some small time yoga center or some yoga trainer you not go to an industry for this choosing equipment and facilities uh, again you can go to decathlon and spend a fortune but you can uh, simply have it at your home also this is uh, something like uh, my minimal home setup now a yoga mat some hanging uh, and uh, some rollers and uh, the important thing is your body weight. You can have to do that. Nutrition is very important. So you can have an entire day based on this nutrition and exercise, but carbohydrates, protein and fat, there is a lot of concepts now. We have to, now people are eating high fats and calling them as a paleo diet, this, that. But basically we have to stick to a balanced diet, like nothing in excess. So. Uh, when to eat and how to eat is all a huge uh, subjects and light snack before the workout is generally needed and at least allow three to four hours between uh, a meal and before exercising and have a good amount of hydration because sometimes you may be just uh, not hungry but only thirsty. You need to just drink water. Mental fitness is very important and mental fitness can give us concentration, focus, stress handling, and we can go stronger connections and more fulfilling life. A lot of techniques uh, psychologists and uh, psychiatrists uh, and mental trainers use like imagery, goal setting, self-talk, this, that. Uh, athletes use this very much. So uh, I'm not going to go into the details, but this, there are some techniques that we can use that you can consult the specialists, uh, psychologists and immediately you can benefit. Uh, simple things is uh, you can play strategy games with your boys and girls and uh, some relaxation techniques, solving puzzles and uh, even exercises are mentally uh, very good and uh, stop multitasking and uh, stop your job <laughs> if it is very, very tasking like Professor Karaksham said and be positive and uh, try something always different. That's why I try to sing and do some bit of uh, music just to kill the monotony, play some games, read, take time for yourself. That is how uh, we mentally make ourselves fit. So I'm making call of sports medicine has announced the latest top fitness, top 10 fitness trends. Uh, it differs from uh, continents to continent. And uh, number one now seems to be the wear a wearable technology. So you have a measurement of everything in a small handheld or even watches. So you can use it to your advantage. HIIT, high interval intensity interval exercises, HIIT it's called. So basically it's a short burst of high intensity exercise followed by a period of rest. Uh, example is given here, 30 seconds of hard work, 10 seconds of rest for seven minutes is a HIIT program for you. So this is uh, very popular now because it helps you to achieve your goals faster. And group training is very important, whereas instructors teach and lead and motivate people. There are usually generally around six to 10 people in the group, whether cycling or running. So it's very, very nice concept. Free weight training, like uh, you would have seen free weights, barbells, kettlebells, medicine balls, all these are coming into play. And because they are naturally, they are good for exercise. And personal training, as we said, uh, a personal trainer is a very good treasure for you. That is why you see all the movie stars, superstars, they have their own personal trainers, either to have a six pack or go to a size zero for the heroines. So personal training is very important. 
Exercise as medicine is a concept by American College of Sports Medicine. It's a global initiative encouraging primary care physicians to include physical activity assessment and treatment as a part of their treatment. And, uh, you know, 20 minutes of brisk walking a day is considered as a best medicine, best antidote for all communicably uh, diseases in this globe. So a lot of research is going on and body weight training using our own body weight is sometimes enough. You do not even hit the gym. It's very important now in the period of COVID. People are staying fit instead of, I mean, in spite of going, not going to the gym because of this body weight training. Fitness programs for the older adults, it's gaining popularity. Probably we come into this bracket, many of us at least. So it's slightly different and health and wellness coaches are there now. So mental coach and health coach, uh, you would have heard a lot of doctors have uh, been doing this uh, wellness coaching. Probably you would have heard about Dr. Sheila Nambiar, my good friend, who's also a wellness coach. And uh, Dr. Pritika Chari, she's a fantastic coach also, mental coach, mental wellness coach. Certified fitness professionals. Previously, it was someone who did a bodybuilding, called himself as a trainer. Now, you have internationally valid running courses. We also run at uh, Sri Ramachandra, some fitness certifications, and uh, they have to be uh, uh, well-educated. So in uh, CSS Ramachandra, we have developed a 30 minutes exercise program to be done at home. And we have decided based on international expertise, what to do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, where we vary the exercises. And these exercises can be seen on our YouTube channel. And that is how we train our staff and students to uh, stay fit even during the COVID. So uh, we can do it remotely also. Talking about my center, this is the Center for Sports Science uh, of Sri Ramachandra. It is a globally recognized sports science center. We have various uh, athletic academies and sports science activities. Uh, and uh, it in a sp short span of time, it has grown into uh, popularity in India. We have all the sports science testing, right from exercise physiology labs to podiatry labs to high altitude chambers and international experts from South Africa, Australia, and a biomechanics center where international bowlers come and we check their reaction to see whether they are checking or bowling correctly. Uh, we only uh, clear them. There's uh, only one such center in Asia and one of the four centers in the world. So, and we can do a lot of uh, uh, injury corrections and uh, technique corrections also in using biomechanics. Not only for cricket, for tennis, running, and football also we do, uh, even rowing, we can do this. We are accredited by the International Cricket Council. And uh, this is uh, Professor Armagum Sir, our director, uh, who receives the award from various uh, international and national level. So we have a lake inside to do the rowing. And Dave Watmore is a cricket coach. Now, MS Dhoni has also has come in for cricket coaching. We are partners for Chennai FC and have lots of uh, sports academies, including hockey and uh, Government of India's Hello India uh, program. So I have a small video, but I think I'll fall short of time. So I'm skipping the video. Yeah. So then we come. How long the, is your video? Uh, just uh, 30 seconds. Please go ahead and play it. Thank you. National champion Agan Vendi, Manipuru Alam Botlam, Jimilam, and Katamai Parishilikan Divan. Mansaratin, Oro millisecond of Milapata. In him, Munoto Hogan and Kishastri Parishila Manavan. In the technique improved the Anum, and the Sadika Shamdeva Pati Pati Pikuanum. Oro stroke in the Vega of Kutu Anu, Shastriya Parishilam in a Sahai. I am ready, India, ready to win.
So that's how we train the Olympic athletes for our country. But we give these facilities to the common public also for uh, weight loss and general fitness. So here we come to the uh, quiz session, if I, we can call it. The number one uh, non-weight bearing exercise is uh, swimming. And the heart rate is mostly used to monitor training intensity. And exercise high is given by opioid peptides. And caffeine is a very common supplement that can cause nervousness and GI distress, often very overused. And physically less than uh, 30 minutes for less than two weeks, uh, days per week is a risk factor for cardiovascular problems. And aerobic system is generally used in high uh, marathon. So this is how I tend to keep myself filled. I tend to cycle to work in most of the days and uh, in weekends whenever possible, I tend to hit the Mahabs by cycling with my beautiful uh, group of uh, my colleagues who do even 150, 200 kilometers, uh, including my boss, Dr. Arvam sir. So we do running. We have a, a walk, walking and running club at the university. And uh, my job also requires me to travel with the football teams to test them and uh, travel with them and to train with them. So naturally, <laughs> I have to be a bit fit then only we can score this kind of uh, glory. You can see me here with my physio at the ISL lifting trophy, uh, the Chennai NFC lifted the trophy. So you get a lot of uh, benefits uh, sometimes being in sports and being fit. Uh, so thank you very much for the opportunity and uh, I'm open for any questions. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for that uh, amazing presentation to, uh, to enlighten us about what we should do on a daily basis. Uh, if you can, just let us know what is your YouTube channel, sir. I think we can all go and watch it as well. Sure, sure. Uh, it's our institutional uh, YouTube channel. It's uh, Center for Sports Science, CSS Tree Hub. Okay. What I'll do is I'll make a small PDF of, of uh, my presentation and share with our IMA members. So yes, that sir. We can literally go through uh, these points. Yes, sir. That will be lovely, sir. So that we can also see because your the PPT on that it showed was very small, so we couldn't read through what is to be done on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Sure, sorry. I'll I'll be very glad to share with you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Yes, I have a query in the sense, um, like for walking is is uh, is what is recommended, but then for people with arthritis, the orthopedicians say don't walk, do um, non-weight training exercise, weight-bearing exercises, which is like swimming, but then now we are not able to go swimming. So what is an alternative, sir? That's a fantastic question because a lot of people have this arthritis, but I'll tell you, people in the West, they have multiple arthritis and they have undergone bilateral knee uh, replacements and even burning arthritis, they are running full marathons. It's all in the mind. Oh. So it is people will say that you should not do that but when you do uh, proper uh, uh, technique and proper strengthening still people defeat arthritis uh, sometimes uh, early arthritis when you do proper uh, walking running you can overcome it but there is where this uh, non weight bearing exercises come into play instead of uh, running walking definitely one can do it is not harmful we can do it on a softer surface not on a cement road we can do it on a trail or a uh, lawn or something or if it is not possible then let's go for the exercise cycle cycle is best and there is efx also we can they can do that and if they have access to water that's best like a small swimming pool or some water body nearby and that's the best form of non-weight bearing where there is a will there is a go so okay. we can do there is always an alternate form of exercise and uh, only this is required. Absolutely, sir. Thank you so much for that encouragement because now I'm going to go against my orthopedician and say, I'm going to go walking half an hour a day. So I, <laughs> I hope it works, sir. So that'll be walking great. So will definitely not kill people. Walking will definitely not destroy joints, but not walking will definitely destroy us. Yes, sir. I truly agree with you. Thank you, sir. Are there any more questions? Uh, there is a question in the chat box. Uh, sorry, sir. I didn't see. Yeah. Uh, I'm just not. Do you use bioimpedance before assessing them? Yeah, bioimpedance we can do regularly. Also, there is a simpler technique called uh, fat calipers. Uh, we can use the skin uh, thickness in five places. 
and that can give us the body fat percentage. So always uh, we don't require uh, fancy equipment. For any fancy test, we have simpler tests also we can do. Of course, DEXA is the gold standard for measuring the body fat percentage. But when we don't have, we can use simpler techniques to uh, do the body uh, fat measuring. When to start exercises, the Indian frailty has negative effects on CVS events. When to start exercises, I think when we start exercises when we are born, the mm -hmm. shouting, the crying itself is an exercise, the hands and uh, you should see the cycle, uh, cycling kind of movements when the babies do. It's the best form of core exercises. What we tend to do in the adult uh, age is re just replica of the children's uh, this thing. They sit in Vajrasana so easily. They do all the exercises beautifully. But we have somewhere along the line, we have forgotten all the skills and now we are trying to gain back. So nothing uh, is a good day for starting exercise. It is today and now. What is good diet proportion for long distance runners for 30 kilometers per week? So this also depends on the age and their current uh, fat percentage So based on the assessment. Uh, generally, we sports scientists recommend a normal diet. We don't recommend some supplements or anything. You should uh, gain your calories uh, and micronutrients from the food. And uh, generally, uh, the long distance runners have to prepare themselves before the event by carrying enough number uh, water, number one, enough electrolytes, enough carbohydrates so that is where the sports drinks uh, are popular but anything less than one hour you need just only one water and if it is more uh, uh, i mean humid and uh, very hot probably little more electrolytes are needed and then uh, it's a mathematical calculation so once you start doing what we uh, generally uh, say is listen to your body thirst is a very good form of uh, indicator and uh, Without thirst, sometimes people over drink water and they faint also. So the answer is very huge for this. Generally, it is uh, scientifically decided. What causes syncope after climbing four to six flight of stairs? Very easy. If you haven't climbed before, you are going to faint because uh, it is unaccustomed form of exercises. And then when we have blood pressure and antihypertensive medications, and if we have undetected heart failure, as Professor Kadakshan told. So all these things could be a form of syncope. Syncope is a red flag for us. So we take it very seriously and assess the person or the athlete for all cardiovascular or neurological uh, problems. So it has to be taken seriously. But generally, it, is, uh, it could be as simple as hypoglycemia or uh, this uh, anti-hypertensive uh, medicines. But we have to detect I and mean, uh, diagnose it properly. Any other questions in the chat box? Yes. If there are no questions, thank you very much, sir, for the enlightening talk. Thank you, We sir. can proceed to the next talk. Sir, thank you very much for that amazing talk, sir. Thank you, Dr. Um, I have uh, also your, uh, uh, your bandmates wishing you a happy Sunday as 